Justin, recently U.S. swimming athlete Anita Alvarez recently drowned while performing in the artistic swimming solo free finals. Many articles said that this isn't the first time it's occurred and that it was due to overexertion. As a medical director and an expert in this field, can you provide any insight? Thank you so much for the great question, Wes. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Dr. Justin Semstrat, StarGuard Elite Medical Director. As my inbox and text messages started to become flooded with this article and I looked into it uh, a little bit more, most of the articles were saying that she lost consciousness due to overexertion and that it had and that it occurred a year prior as well while she was competing. And what a lot of the articles I think missed was one, identifying that she drowned. She had respiratory impairment from submersion or immersion in liquid. And fortunately, she didn't go into cardiac arrest. She responded with just some rescue breaths and some supplemental oxygen, but she drowned and survived without morbidity. And I think that that was, uh, would be an important step for those that report on these articles, but as well as our water cooler discussions about it to use that terminology that she drowned. So the real question is what caused her drowning? And most of the articles said it was overexertion. And if you and I are running and we're jogging and I overexert myself and lose consciousness, then it's either because of a heart problem, some other medical condition, dehydration, or some other medical emergency that caused it. And if it was just exertion that was causing this, then we would see it in all of these other high performance athletes at the Olympic level. But what I think occurred was shallow water blackout. And most of us think of shallow water blackout as somebody who's intentionally hyperventilating then going underwater to see how long they can hold their breath. As many as, of you know, our trigger to breathe isn't low oxygen. It's high carbon dioxide in the blood. So if we hyperventilate and lower our carbon dioxide, then we can hold our breath because our carbon dioxide level doesn't rise. But during that time, our level of consciousness is controlled by our oxygen levels. And so our oxygen drops faster than our CO2 rises and we lose consciousness. But it is frequently seen in elite performance athletes, whether it's Air Force PJs, Navy SEALs, or Olympic swimmers, they are maximally exerting themselves and may be hyperventilating unintentionally, just like I would be hyperventilating if I sprinted around the block right now. And then holding their breath and they are able to train themselves to that level of overcoming the urge to breathe from the rising CO2, or they've unintentionally hyperventilated during their maximal exertion to drive their CO and it has driven their CO2 down. And now they're becoming hypoxic without realizing it. So I would really highlight this case as an example of one, non-fatal drowning, even though it won't wind up in the drowning statistics that shows how much more common non-fatal drowning is than fatal drowning, but also for shallow water blackout. And there was a lot of articles with criticism of the lifeguards not responding in time and not recognizing the severity of the emergency. And it's easy to develop that inattentional blindness to a lap swimmer, to an elite athlete, to somebody who taps on your tower and says, I'm training to be a Navy SEAL. I'm going to be swimming back and forth across the bottom or something like that to pay them less attention. But the reality is that those are the people that are more at risk for shallow water blackout than kind of the average Joe weekend warrior like myself or the child who's intentionally hyperventilating. And I will add that I've also seen cases of shallow water blackout in six, eight, 10 year old kids who are repeatedly surface diving to pick up uh, rings or other toys off of the bottom. And they're so focused on that task of picking up the toy, they may not be 
taking full breaths at the surface and are unintentionally hyperventilating just by repeatedly going to the surface. So all the more reason why we need to stay vigilant in the, uh, in the chair. And I will add that the treatment for shallow water blackout is the same as any other drowning. You're gonna perform your initial assessment and if they're unresponsive, then provide rescue breaths, oxygen, and then chest compressions as needed. Uh, along the normal usual ratios. Thank you so much, Wes, for the great question, and we'll catch you all next time.